Hello, Travis Huppert here, Naughty by Nature on Facebook. I uh, wanted to walk through a small demonstration of a, a tie using one of our nested bite perfect mandrels. Um, what we're shooting for today is we're going for a grip handle using a uh, three pass pineapple. Uh, you can see the base foundation is built here. What we want to do is end up with <coughs> a grip, something like this. Uh, this is the same tie we're going to be doing today, a three pass pineapple. Uh, it's tied with a 6 bite uh, 11 lead base casa knot. Um, so that's what we're working on. Um, anytime we're doing multi-pass pineapples with nested bites, uh, this is the tool you'd want to use. Um, you can see we got our pins all set up. Everything's labeled. Um, like I've said before, I use masking tape to do my numbers. Uh, then just take the tape off. It doesn't leave a residue. Uh, your tool stays clean that way. Uh, you can also see if you look down the mandrel that uh, the bites top to bottom are offset, which we talked about before. Uh, we're doing an odd number of leads, um, so that's important that you get it set up right. Um, what I typically do is anchor the cord on the back side of where I want to start the tie. So we're starting here at the top um, at number one, obviously. <clears throat> Reference material we're using today. Uh, so this is my Turk's Head cookbook, and we're going for six bite, eleven lead, uh, casa knot to start. Uh, then we switch to Tom Hall's book. Uh, he goes through a two pass type two pineapple, uh, and then a couple pages later, he does a three pass type three pineapple, and that's the knot we're trying to build. Um, but the main thing is to get everything set up right. Uh, you got your pins for your nested bites. Um, so your base cause of knot is going to go from the top screws here uh, <clears throat> to the top screws here. So it'll go here to here. Your next knot that gets built drops down a pin here and pops out a pin here. And then the third pass, same thing. Uh, so going through our 6x11 lead cause of knot, we start at pin 1 at the top. Go around to pin 6 on the bottom. Uh, we're going to six on the top, but we're going to pass over. Um, turn again. So we're going down to pin five on the bottom. Uh, go over. Uh, from five, we go under. <coughs> These fids are great tools, and I really like the ones with the duck bill uh, when working with the mandrel. Uh, it seems to work out pretty good. Uh, so bottom pin five, we go under, over, under, to top pin five. From top pin five, then we go under, over, under, to bottom pin four. Under, over, under. Over, under, to bottom pin four. From bottom pin four, we go under, over. It's important to get that twist out as you're tying too. Um, once you get the the knot done and you're going to remove the slack and tighten the knot if you have a lot of twist in there it takes a lot of time to work all that out so it's best to do it while you're building the knot <clears throat> so back up bottom pin four we go under over then we go over under over to top pin four up to top pin four from top pin four, then we go under over. Under over, and then the same thing, over under over to bottom pin three. These little cost of knots are pretty simple. Uh, this trick said cookbook is invaluable, but you can also find um, a lot of these <clears throat> knots online uh, with instructional YouTube videos or uh, the advanced grid maker, you can go in and uh, build your own knot. Um, so 
just go on there, enter what you're trying to do for a base cost. Not it's just over under, and then you stretch it out uh, to what you're trying to get to. Um, so bottom pin three, we go under, over, under. So under, over, under. Once again, remove that slack or that twist rather. Uh, bottom pin three, under, over, under, and then we go over, under, over, under. So we go over, under, over, under. And we are going to top pin three. Right there. From top pin three, we go under, over, under. Kind of keep the all your leads fairly straight as you're tying. Uh, this will help when you go to straighten it when you're done. Um, so under, over, under, and then we go over, under, over, under to bottom pin two. So over, under, over, under. There to bottom pin two. Bottom pin two, we go under, over, under, over. Pretty simple run list to follow. Um, once you kind of see the pattern, you really don't need need the run list because it just uh, it just makes sense on how the knot is built. So under, over, under, over, and then we go over, under, over, under, over. So we go over, under, over, under. over to top pin two from top pin two under over under over i like how that little duck build gets right in there between the tube uh it seems to to be a better fit than the uh, the ones with more of a point uh my preference but if you're working with these mandrels um that's what i would recommend uh, so under over under over and then same thing as we did coming up so we go <coughs> over under over under over so over and then we go over under over under over down to bottom pin one uh, from bottom pin one, it's just under, over, under, over, all the way back up to the top. Um, this is our last pass. Uh, we should have the cast not built. So under, over. Under. Over, under. Seems like the more you look online, the more you can find resources for Turk's head knots and run lists and uh, tons of different Casa knots. And really, there's a lot of information available online. A lot of the Facebook groups uh, have files posted that are very helpful, helpful uh, as well. Uh, so this information is is really easy to get a hold of. Um, and then we go out under over. We're back to pin one. <coughs> what I typically do then is tape off when I'm making more than one pass. Again, I tape off. So now both leads are there. I take the excess cord, which I guess they made it a little long on this one. Uh, typically you like to end with about that much coming out because once you tighten it, you'll have more slack. Uh, so the rest is pretty much just be wasted cord. Um, so now that your base Turk's head knot is tied, uh, what you want to do is go through and straighten the leads. Uh, you want to make sure all your crossings all your crossings that run up and down uh, basically line up. This is important because if you start into your pineapple and your other interweaves, by the time you get it all built, you have too many cords to ever really get it straight. Um, so this is your opportunity. So I typically go through and make sure all my crossings are lined up top to bottom, make the knot look really uniform and clean. Uh, it doesn't take too long, but it is a, it's a very crucial step to end with a good, a good knot, a good project. Um, just taking this extra time to make sure you get everything lined up. And that's one of the beauties of tying on 
a mandrel with the evenly spaced pins and everything's laid out for you um it kind of does a lot of that for you so you can as you can see on our crossings uh just the way the knot was built on the tool um it's in pretty good shape already uh if you try to tie in a mandrel or with thumbtacks and your layout's not that good and you're off uh, you'll find you'll spend a lot more time mm -hmm. trying to straighten that's one of the ways i believe these tools save you time uh, so you can focus more on tying and not on dressing so looks like we're about around the tube looks like we got all our crossings lined up and you could see when you got it because it it just looks so clean all your spaces between your leads are pretty even all your crossings are lined up um, and that pretty much tells you you're ready to start with your next pass um, I don't know if you could see that or not um, but it's pretty well dressed it's pretty even. It's a nice looking knot. Uh, everything's set up just right. Um, anyhow, so our second cord we're going to use uh, white. Obviously, we're continuing with the white, red, white, blue theme of the tie. So now we're going to switch from our base casa knot run list to a two pass type two pineapple. Um, if you look at uh, the instructions for this it's tied up of a five part four byte casa knot ours is obviously much bigger um, but it should be intuitive um, how the knot is built based on the way he describes it and then you just expand it from there <clears throat> so when I do my interweaves I don't like to start at the same pin I started my casa knot because uh, if you end up with all your cords coming out right here then you have to find a way to try to hide all those at the end in the knot so what I typically do, if I'm going to do three leads and like three passes, so I have three colors and I have six around, I will skip one and go to this one here. What you want to do is get this interweave, your next cord underneath, and then it needs to go on that bite right there. So that's where you want to start. Um, if you look at the run list to start this one, it starts out going... It starts out going under two. <coughs> and then once you get it going, it, it essentially is going to follow this cord on the left. So whatever it does, you do. So if it goes over, you go over. If it goes under, you go under. Uh, the herringbone is very, very similar. It's just a little bit different. Um, it doesn't have true nested bites and it typically falls a cord on the right um, and then the way you split pairs with it is uh, slightly different um, but it looks very similar when you're done so you can see we're just following that cord on the left obviously this is not to teach you how to tie a two pass pineapple um, although we'll go through it uh, it's more to show you uh, how to set up and use the nested bite tool um, we got down to the bottom here, uh, still following the cord on the left, and then we're going to go out of the pattern, just like it does over, but we're going to go to <clears throat> a two pass type two pineapple pushes the bite count outside that bite count, and that's what stretches the knot. So that's what these extra pins are for, to grab your outside bite right there. <clears throat> so we go back into the knot, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to follow this cord on the right so we go in into the pattern over and then we jump right into whatever the cord on the right is doing so we just trace it around get that set up so the cord on the right goes over we go over it goes under we go under when you get to on the pineapple you don't necessarily split the pairs here you split them here you can see how it's running it's following that cord here so that is where you're going to want to split the pair so when i go over i go over two there split the pair and continue following the cord on the right so whatever it's doing uh, that's what we want to do goes over under over under
So we are back to our next bite. Um, so once again, you grab the second pin down from the top here. Uh, that's where this cord is going to nest. Uh, that's what are called nested bites. And once again, do the same thing. We're gonna follow this cord on the left. We go under, just follow it right on down the pattern. Whatever it does, you do. These are pretty simple. Uh, once you get the hang of how to build the knots, they're really uh, pretty straightforward. And you'll see on the third pass, uh, we'll be doing the same thing, but we'll have two cords here. So you'll be going under two over two. If you were to add a fourth pass, it'd be the same thing. You go under three over three, uh, it just keeps adding by a multiple of one every pass, but the concept is identical. So once you understand the concept, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so once again, we're following the cord on the left. Uh, we get to the white strand, which is the one we're running now. We're gonna split the pair here. You were following the cord on the right on the way up. So this cord goes over, we go over two. Split that pair there. Blue cord's wanting to get involved already. Uh, same thing, right on down out the knot. Comes out of the pattern over, same thing. It's a nested bite, so it's second pin down top, second pin down bottom. When you turn to go back up, um, you are gonna split that pair. We always <clears throat> split this pair here to start. So you go under the white, and then once again, going up, we're following the cord on the right. So whatever it does, we do. So it goes over, under. Over, under. Same thing, over two, see that? We're gonna go over two, this one goes over, we go over, but we're gonna go over two and split that pair, and then we go under two and split that pair. Continue on up. They're durable, you can drop them. Over, under. We don't go out of the pattern on the top ever. We only go out on the bottom. So when we get back to the top and you go under, that's where you nest it back there down that second pin from the top. Um, turn and make your pass going down. So we're gonna go under two here, under, and we're gonna split that pair like we've been doing. So split the white and red and follow the cord on the left. Pretty straightforward, it repeats itself all the way throughout the pattern. Whatever the cord on the left does, same thing, going down. So over, under, over, under. Once again, always remove that twist as you go. Uh, you don't wanna be dealing with that when you're removing slack and tightening your knot. Again, we're following the cord on the left. Uh, we go over, split that pair, and then we go under, split that pair. Over, under, and we come out of the knot over. Come out over, put it on the nested bite there. Uh, we go back into the pattern. We're gonna split that pair there, under. Then we go over and we split the pair here and we're back to following the cord on the right hand side. We're gonna follow that all the way up the pattern. Whatever it does, we do and we always split the pairs. Over, under. Over, this goes over, we go over, two, split the pair, under two, split the pair. Over, two, split that pair.
we go over under we don't exit we don't exit the base cost us so we stay inside pick up our pin second one down uh, for that nested bite uh, and then we're right back to it so under two we split that pair following the cord on the left going down following the cord on the right going up always split the pairs that's the base rules over two split that pair over under once again always following the cord on your left going down all right so same thing left cord goes over we go over two split the pair go under two split that pair you know I really like the way white cord looks in a pattern but I tell you what you really got to wash your hands because uh it's so easy to get dirty uh, it doesn't stay looking so good for very long uh, especially as a bracelets um, once again following the corner left we go out we split that pair went under go over uh, find your next nested bite second pin down same thing here split the pair going in over two and we're off following the cord on the right so it goes <coughs> it goes under we go under on the way up you're always following the one on the right on the way down you're always following the one on the left same thing so we follow the cord on the right it goes over under we go over under goes over we go over two split that pair under two split that next pair over two split the pair under two split the pair you see that so we're always following this cord on the right and we're always splitting the pairs when we come to them over under stay inside the base casa Turk said find your next pin uh, which for the second pass is always the second one down turn again so we're gonna go under two split that pair right there following the cord on the left going down over two under two splitting pairs again I know these pineapple knots look really difficult uh, but really once you get the hang of them they're pretty straightforward uh, extremely nice decorative knots you could do a lot of things with them um, type one if it's a type one then this white cord would never leave the boundary of the red cord so you'd turn here and your bite would be inside and it'd be like it is here uh, type two extends at one type three we're going to push it out to here you could you could do as many passes as you want at some point it gets it gets a, a large knot in uh typically six passes are about as big as i've seen uh, i've created some run lists with some eights but i don't know if i'll ever tie them um, so once again following the cord on the left over two under two splitting the pairs over two under two and we go out of the pattern over find our bite here to nest on split the pairs going in and like before over two under two following the court on the right whatever it does we do we're almost there you can start to see the classic pineapple look in the knot uh, over two under one again we're following the cord on the right uh, we're gonna go over because it went over the red one and then we're gonna split this pair here and then we're gonna go under as it went under and we're gonna split that pair there Over two, splitting the pair. Under two, splitting the pair. Over two and under. Right there where it should be. 
So we're going to go in under two, split the pair. And once again, going down the tube. I guess I call this the top and this the bottom because I started at the top. So when I say going down, I'm going from top to bottom. And when I'm going up, I'm going from bottom to top. Uh, you probably already know that, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, so once again, following, going down the cord on the left, we go over two, split the pair, under two, split the pair, over two. You can see here, our white cord is not there yet. So don't, you go over two and then under one only because our white cord is on our pass coming up is not there yet. Uh, so just pay attention. Make sure you get your your splits right and your over unders right so again it goes the one on the left goes over we go over two it goes under we go under two all the time splitting the pairs over two under two we go out over two find our nest nested bite under one split the pair going in this time we should have all of our cords there. So over two, under two, should go over two, under two, over two, under two, all the way to the top. Over two, under two. Over two, under two. Over two, under two. Over two, under one. And this is important as well. You get back to where you started. So you're on that nested bite there. See, that's where we started. What I like to do is make sure you go out under everything here. When you're going to dressing, you don't want that end in the wrong spot. And if it's just underneath the pattern where it should be, uh, it makes for everything cleaner uh, when you're all done. So that is a type two two pass knot um, we want to expand it one more time to a type 3 three pass um, so our reference page um, is in Tom's Hall's book um, but we kind of already went through the steps to do it you're just going to add uh, for the next cord uh, you start out under two over two and then when you get to splitting pairs you start going under three over three but let me show you how you enter Kind of get it set up to get started. So once again, we started here with our base Turks end. We skip to here to do our second pass pineapple. We're going to skip. What I would do is skip one and go to here with my third pass. Uh, once again, what that does is when you're going to dress the knot, you don't have all six ends of your strands coming out the same location. It makes it it makes it more difficult to to hide everything and make it look real clean. Um, so as we start here, once again, we're going to be following the cord on the left. This time it is the white cord because that was our last pass. So we'll be following the white cord down. So you can see how we got everything under. This is how I like to start them. Get this cord under, under, and it's right there on the pin where it should be. Um, but don't just put it over these two cords and start in right here. Take everything under, and when you come out, take everything under. What it does is it gets those cords underneath the base casa. It makes it easier to dress and everything else. Um, so this is gonna be the same principle. Once again, we're following the cord on the left. Um, on the way down, we just do whatever it does, and obviously everything from this point forward is gonna be over two, under two at a minimum. So over two, under two, over two, under two. Same thing, following the cord on the left. Don't lose your place and get off, you can. Um, just pay attention. So over two, under two. So whatever it does, you do. Same thing, over two, under two. Over two, 
Removing all the twist. Which I can already tell you it's going to be, a, uh, when I get it done, it's going to be pretty tight on here. I probably should have mm -hmm. spaced these out a mm -hmm. little bit bigger. Um, I don't see a lot of gap in here, so it's going to get real tight to, to finish it. Um, but anyhow, I'll walk you through maybe a couple more passes. I think you have a general concept now of, of, of how the nested bite well, come on. How the nested bite mandrel works um, and kind of the a basic pineapple three type three three pass. Uh, so we come down here, obviously we're on our last pin now. This is our third pass. Um, so we had three pins in here for three pass. You can see how this will nest on the bottom one. <coughs> so go back in over two, under two. Same thing on the way up. Uh, we're going to follow this cord on the right. So whatever the cord on the right does is what we do. Uh, it goes over two, we go over two, it goes under two, we go under two. So you can see here, the cord on the right, once again, goes, goes over these two. So we're gonna go over those two but we're also going to go over three because every time we come to the blue, we're going to want to split that pair just like we did with the red and the white. So we're going to go over three when we get to it or under three, depending on where we're at in the pattern and how we need to split it. So over three, under two. The more you get, uh, the more passes you do, you just have to pay attention. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get to the end of your tie and realize you had one cord back here that went the wrong way because uh, sometimes you have to take half the knot apart to get back to it um, so it just takes a a little bit of focus to make sure you're getting it right um, but once you kind of get the uh, idea of how to build the knot it's really pretty straightforward uh, over two under two Get all the twist out. So now at the top, it's gonna to go on this third pin down. One or third pass, uh, type three. So you're on your third color, you wanna drop it down here. This is really the beauty of the nested bite mandrel. It holds all those bites in a, in a nice row, evenly spaces out your knot. Um, it's just a powerful tool. This has three more rows. Could we easily do a six, six pass tie in here? Um, you know, you could we could custom make whatever you want pretty much, but I don't know that you'd ever go more than six pass. That's kind of why that's our base for sliding nested bite um, mandrel. Uh, the six bite's a pretty big knot, uh, six pass rather. Uh, for globe knots, um, it's useful as well. Um, they set up different. You might have five pins in this row and two in this one. It's there's a whole cookbook I have for globe knots. I don't spend a lot of time on them, but this tool is very handy to set up those knots and tie them. Uh, plus, it gives you a bigger platform. Um, the, it just gives you a bigger platform where you could use bigger cords, you could put bigger ties. Um, and we also make these in larger sizes where really you're, you're only limited by your imagination with these tools and what you want to do with them um, and how you plan to use them. We'll make one more pass down. So once again, now we're following the cord on the left, just like last time. I got way too much stuff on one desktop here. So white cord went under two, we go under two. It goes over two, we go over two. You're always following the cord on the left. Work out all your twists. Make sure you get everything kind of nested in there and laying flat. Over two, under two, just following the cord on the left. We got to here again. So you see we're coming up on a, a, a pair we need to split. 
So the white cord goes over two. We're going to continue over three and split that pair right there. You can see it's already getting tight. I might have to actually uh, expand the colors and start over to get this complete. Um, some of the learning, just trying to figure out how big you need it for the knots. Uh, that's one nice thing about the grid makers. It does tell you a rough size of your knot, and it also gives you an approximate length of the cord you need for it, um, which is really helpful. I use the uh, use that for reference and add a little more just to make sure I'm short. Um, the last thing you want to do is get through a tie like this and realize you're short uh, somewhere. Have to take it apart and start over. Um, once again, following the cord on the left, going down the mandrel, over two or under two, over two, out of the pattern. So we go completely out of the pattern again, all the way down uh, to its own bite on the bottom. The third pass, third pin. Here we're going to go under the blue, split that pair right there, right off the bat. And then we go under two, over two. Pick up that cord on your right now, because uh, that's the one we're going to be following going up the mandrel. Now we're going up. The cord on the right is going to be the one we're following all the way through the pattern. Every time you get to a pair, split them. Um, that's it. Uh, just continue to work your way around the knot. Um, Using the same build, uh, same kind of run. Once you understand how to run the knot out, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Once again, you could use reference material like Tom Hall, uh, but if you look at his knot, it's a very small base knot that he's running the pattern through. So you intuitively have to imagine this being a longer knot and just follow the run list, go in and out of the pattern uh, the, way, the way they show to do it, um, but just expand it. Um, and then once you figure it out, you really, this reference material, um, if you haven't tied something in a while, it's good to check back into it if you need to. But once you understand how to tie it and you've tied enough of them, it's just really intuitive. So anyhow, that's our nested bite tool. I'm not going to finish this whole thing up. Uh, I can hear Mama's got dinner ready. So anyhow, uh, enjoy. If you have any questions about this mandrel, don't hesitate to hit me up on my Facebook page, Naughty by Nature, or you can check... My personal page, Travis Huppert, send me questions, ask me whatever you want. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, have a great night.